Welcome back to Panorama Anime. Today, I will be continuing my recap on Cowboy Bebop. In the last episode, Spike and Jet gained a couple of new crew members, Faye and Ed. Faye met Spike in a space casino on a job and tried to swindle him, while Ed befriended a satellite and hacked her way onto the Bebop. The Bebop crew finally has a stroke of luck as they catch a bounty and tie him up on their spaceship. Ed, the genius hacker from Earth who mischievously invited herself on the Bebop, comes out and teases the bounty. As they fly toward a planet called Ganymede, Jet, the captain of the Bebop whose past has yet to be unfolded, looks at a broken watch and experiences a flush of memories about a woman close to his heart. Spike, Jet's right-hand man who happens to be an ex-syndicate member, and Faye, the wanted criminal with a mysterious past who joined the Bebop after crossing paths with them, wake Jet up from his dreams. Faye teases him that he must be remembering the old girl that had left him, to which Jet gets angry. Jet's old friend Donnelly calls Jet and they talk about the old times, including Jet's ex-girlfriend, Alyssa. Donnelly tells him that Alyssa is working at a bar named La Fine near the port of Mavis. As they reach Mavis, Faye lays on the deck of the Bebop to get tan. Ed is fishing and Spike is repairing his swordfish. Jet enters La Fine, where he finds a man named Rint. He asks him to leave, but Alyssa arrives and tells him that Jet is her old friend. Rint leaves, and Alyssa and Jet have a conversation. Alyssa tells him that she is closing the shop and moving to another city. Jet begins to worry about her that she won't be able to repay the bank. Alyssa tells him that she's fine and she has a new boyfriend, Rint. Jet tells her that he's a bounty hunter and shows her the watch. On the other hand, Donnelly calls Spike and tells him that there's a new bounty, Rint, Alyssa's boyfriend. What a small universe it is. Spike flies off to contact Jet at his ship, but he doesn't answer. Jet describes the time when Alyssa left him and asks her for the reason. Alyssa responds by saying time has never stopped and she has forgotten about it. She bids him goodbye and Jet leaves. I mean, did she have to make this harder for him? Outside of Lafine, Rint tries to light his cigarette but fails, experiencing flashbacks of the night when he shot a loan shark in self-defense. Rint is scared knowing that Jet is a bounty hunter and Alyssa wants them to escape. Spike searches for Lafin, but he sees Rint and Alyssa on a boat. He pursues them and almost crashes with Jet's hammerhead. Jet tells Spike to stay away, stating he will settle everything by himself. Jet pursues them through tight canals and into an open bay where he uses his ship's harpoon to slow down their boat. He reels it in, but the tail of their boat breaks and they crash into the shore. Alyssa points a gun at Jet and pleads with him to stop and let them go. She even fires at him. Jet says that even if he left them, someone else will catch them. Alyssa breaks down in tears and states she left because she wanted to have her own life and Jet always made decisions by himself. Rint tries to escape, but Jet stops him. Later, Rint is taken into custody. Jet says that time never stops and Rint will be released soon. He leaves and throws the watch into the river and is happy to leave his past behind. Goodbye, simp Jet. The crew is concerned about the lack of bounty leads. Ayn and Ed are sleeping, Jed and Faye are gambling, and Spike is cooking. Ayn is a data dog, which Spike found on a mission and is now part of their crew. Jet has lost everything except his underwear, but challenges Faye again and loses as Faye uses a device to cheat. Maybe Jet feels extra confident with just wearing underwear. Spike enters the room with a shish kebab as Jet takes off the last thing he has. There's a creature crawling around the ship. Jet, being cold and naked, enters the attic to get a blanket and sees a fridge. As he looks at the fridge, the creature is moving around. Faye is sitting on her couch with everything she has won and Spike walks in. Suddenly, an alarm goes off and they run over to the attic where they see that Jet is bitten by something on his neck. Jet tells them it happened near the fridge but Spike claims that there isn't any fridge and leaves. Spike and Jet are in the main room. Spike holds a lizard and a scorpion for Jet to choose for medicine. He chooses the lizard. Spike gives him medicine and Faye enters saying that the smell is terrible. Meanwhile, Jet drinks the medicine and passes out. A large purple mark gets visible on Jet's neck. As Jet is unconscious, Spike uses a computer to identify the poison. The poison doesn't match with any of the viruses. The creature crawls through the vents into the bathroom where Faye is having a bath. As she moves one of her legs, the creature attacks her. Spike and Ed were heat-sensing goggles. Spike sees a blob but thinks it's broken equipment. 
Faye comes out in a bathrobe and melodramatically drops onto the floor and has a purple mark on her leg. Ayn separates from Ed while searching and is bitten by the creature. Spike hears Ayn's voice and runs to him. He finds that Ayn has passed out with a purple mark on his side. He sees the creature with his heat vision goggles and manages to escape with Ayn. Seriously, what the f*** is this thing? Spike lays down Ayn with Faye and Jet. He arms himself and puts the ship on autopilot to land on Mars and begins his search. While searching, he finds Ed's heat vision goggles. He sees oil leaking from a pipe and the creature drops behind him and attacks him. He throws a gas grenade and runs quickly towards the seal room. Later, he opens the door and the creature flies out. Spike shoots at it but isn't able to hit it. He switches to a flamethrower and burns the creature. The creature gives a weird smell and he remembers that he stored a lobster in the fridge but he forgot about it. Spike opens the fridge but is disturbed by its looks. He deactivates the artificial gravity and pushes the fridge towards the airlock. The creature quickly attacks him on his arm and runs away. Spike watches the fridge go, opens the air hatch, and pushes the fridge into space, barely having enough strength to hold onto the ladder. As it turns out, Ed was just sleeping the whole time, but when she wakes up, the creature is moving towards her. She grabs it and eats it, and then goes back to sleep. And that's it, just be like Ed and eat all your problems. Laughing Bull and his son are looking at a shooting star. He's the same prophet Spike went to to ask for advice regarding Asimov. On the ship of the Red Dragon crime syndicate, Vicious, Spike's lifelong friend turned enemy who were partners together in the Red Dragon syndicate, meets with the Van, the heads of the syndicate. He asks the Van to make a deal for Red Eye on the moon of Callisto. The conversation turns to Vicious personally as the Van warn him that a snake cannot eat a dragon. After he leaves, Vicious tells his partner Lin that he will betray him at some point, but Lin promises his loyalty. On the Beepop, Faye has run off with all the money. Ed searches for her on the web but finds a signal for a Julia from Blue Crow on Callisto. She was cut off before she knew who sent it, but Spike knows and flies to look for her. Jet tries to stop him and says they need to find Faye. Spike is determined that it is his Julia and they both have an argument. Jet declares that there won't be a place for Spike if he leaves, and Spike is totally alright with that. Faye has caught a cold and is in a jazz bar in Blue Crow. Somewhere, Spike is searching for Julia, and he took advice from a junkyard worker who told him to find Julius. Julius suggested for him to find the man named Gren at the Blue Crow, who is sometimes seen with a woman. At the bar, Gren begins a conversation with Faye, and she thinks he's flirting with her. Instead, he warns her that there aren't any women in this town. Everybody would love to have Faye. She dismisses his attempt to help her. Spike, looking for Gren, finds a man who mistakes him for Vicious, whom they want to steal money from. The man with his gang trails Spike. Spike gets angry at Vicious's name and attacks the gang and holds the leader. He learns that the red ideal is between Gren and Vicious, while Julia is not involved. Jet goes down to Callisto and looks for Faye. He enters the bar and on the TV, it's revealed that the bounty is on Gren. Jet is about to inform Spike, but stops because of the fight they had. Faye is walking on the streets and finds the gang Spike had beaten up. She is about to take them on, but Gren stops her and takes her to his apartment. Gren goes into the shower, leaving her to look at the photos on the walls where she thinks she sees Vicious in one photo. She hears the answering machine has a message from Vicious wanting to meet. Spike finds Vicious and greets Lin. The two have a battle, but Lin steps in. He demands for him to step away, but he refuses and draws out his gun. Meanwhile, Faye draws out her gun and breaks into the shower. She discovers that Gren has breasts and wide hips, but no male genitalia. Gren informs her that he is both and neither, and backs her against the wall. Spike shouts at Lin to move away, but he doesn't, and Lin shoots him in the chest. Vicious and Lin leave while Spike is lying down on the snow. Gren tells Faye his story about his time on Titan with Vicious. He explains when he returned from war, he was testified against by Vicious. He became the subject of experiments. He wants to meet Vicious to know if he really framed him. Faye learns that Gren did a selfish act of bringing her to his house and opens fire. Gren manages to disarm and handcuff her. Jet enters the rester house and shows a picture of Faye to the bartender 
who tells him that she was here last night. Spike has flashbacks from the past while knocked out. He sees that he is working with Julia and asking her to run away with him. He also sees Faye by her side as he fell from the cathedral. Spike wakes up and realizes that he was just tranquilized by Lynn. Jet asks the man that wanted to beat up Spike for Orlando Apartments, but he ignored him. Jet looks up and sees the building. He enters the Gren apartment and sees Faye on the bed handcuffed. Spike has reached his swordfish and tries to find Vicious. Jet calls him and says that he will allow him back if he helps in finding Gren. Gren has disguised himself as a woman in a burqa and makes his way to the drug dealer Vicious. Gren drops the bag of red eye vials. Lynn approaches and inspects and confirms that they're real. Vicious tells Lynn to give the suitcase containing the Titan Opal. Lynn gives it and walks back. Gren reveals himself and kicks the suitcase back towards Vicious and shoots it, revealing an activated bomb. It explodes but only Lynn is injured. Spike sees the explosion and gets in his ship. Gren tells Vicious about how Julia found the solar transmitter in the music box. Gren talks about the old times to which Vicious coldly states that there is no need to believe anything. Gren fires and Lynn jumps in and takes a bullet for Vicious. Gren tries to escape but is confronted by Spike. Spike trails Vicious and engages in a fight. Vicious prepares to shoot Spike but is stopped by Gren. Vicious fires missiles at Gren's monocraft and hits him. Spike then saves Gren from a finishing missile. Vicious hears the tune of Julia playing on a music box and realizes that Gren has hidden it in the bag. As the song ends, the solar transmitter activates, causes an explosion, and destroys one of the wings. However, he manages to fly back to his ship. Spike also disengages and lands next to Gren's aircraft. Spike asks Gren where to find Julia, but he spits up blood. Gren asks Spike to help him into his ship so he can see Titan one last time before he dies. Spike agrees, and Gren says that Julia often talked about him, but he didn't say where she is now. Spike goes back to the bebop and Jet lets him in. He's not as cold-hearted as he seems after all. And once more, Laughing Bull and his son watch a shooting star in the sky. Spike, Faye, and Jet capture thugs from the Astral Gate, but they didn't get a bounty as they failed to capture the mastermind behind all those robberies. Back at the bebop, they realize they all have the same clue, a chess piece. The Gate Corporation has complaints from people that have lost their money in the Gate robberies. The Corporation has put a 12 million Wulong bounty on capturing the Mastermind, but with no luck. Faye decides that they should work together to find the Mastermind. Jet explains all the hijacks were done in the same way. The robberies are made using a hacking device at the Gate toll and money is electronically laundered. Spike thinks that the Gate Corporation knew about everything, but they don't want to talk about it. Ed gets an electric shock. Fortunately, she's fine. She opens her chessboard and takes Jet's chess piece to connect to a cyber opponent whose data is stored on the chip, Chessmaster Hex. Jet goes to talk to the CEO of Gate Corporation. He meets Jonathan, his old friend, and a bounty hunter. Jonathan explains to him that this bounty isn't easy to catch. Jet lights up a cigarette and is told to put it out. He does so and says that the corporation is hiding something the CEO refuses to respond and asks Jet to leave. Jet listens to the microphone and the cigarette that he put out in the office. He learns that the mastermind is Chessmaster Hex. Spike and Faye analyze the chess piece, but only find chess data. Ed is playing with Hex. Spike reads the bio on Chessmaster Hex. Spike says Hex's name, and Ed tells them she's been playing with Hex. Jet tracks his location and they take their ship to find him. Jonathan is following the bebop secretly. He wants to settle a score with Hex. He disables the bebop and flies towards the junk heap. Spike and Faye use a tracking device to track Hex. They blast their way in and find that he is an old man. Jonathan comes in too and points a grenade at Hex and demands all the money he lost. Suddenly, three random old men jump down from the ceiling. Hex wants to have lunch with them, but they say that he just had lunch and everybody is confused. Jonathan begins to blast away, but Spike knocks him out. Spike states Hex is no longer a threat. Jet then tells the whole story to the CEO that Hex did set up the plan, but forgot about it as he got old. Jet promises them that he will not go public if they leave Hex alone and call off the bounty. 
Jonathan waves at the three old men and greets them as a friend. Ed loses her chess game to Hex. He closes his eyes, showing that he has died of old age as his bird flies away by dropping a feather next to a chess piece. Faye is put into sleep and the doctors lower her into a storage unit. At the Bebop, Jet and Ed are going to eat fish, but they find that they are frozen and full of poison. Jet decides to go after a man who defrauds women to get some money, but thinks Spike will not like it. Faye wakes up from her nightmare to Ein's barking. She cleans Ein's waist and asks Ein if he wants to know about her past. She starts her story. Faye is taken out from the water and wakes up in a hospital. Dr. Batches confirms that she is getting better and asks his assistant Miss Manley about the payment. Faye asks questions like where she is, to which Miss Manley confirms she has lost all of her memories. A lawyer, Matsumoto, approaches Faye and explains to her that he will help her and tell her about all the incidents that happened to her. On that night, Faye tries to escape from the hospital and trips the alarm. On the highway, she meets Matsumoto, who assures her he's there to help, and they enjoy a fancy time together. One day, they are being pursued. Matsumoto explains it is the agency, drives off the road, and tells her to run away. Faye runs and sees a large explosion. Matsumoto has died. Goodbye, weirdly helpful stranger. At the hospital, Faye finds that Matsumoto has transferred everything to her name. But when she accepts it, she is furious that his only assets are his debts. Faye is bound to always be in debt. Faye ends the story and Spike comes in and tells her the story needs editing. Jet returns with the bounty who just so happens to be Matsumoto. Faye talks to him alone. Matsumoto explains to her that the doctor was protecting him, and he is regretful for his behavior. The police arrive, but Faye abducts Matsumoto to get answers from him, whether he really loved her, or if everything was just a scam. Spike hits her with his swordfish. Before Matsumoto answers, the police began communicating with her, and she recognized the voice. Those voices were of Batches and Miss Manley that saved her life. Faye was frustrated with all the lies. The real police arrive and demand their patrol ship. Batches and Manley decide to flee, and Faye decides to claim the bounty. Matsumoto, being in custody, tells Faye that he fell in love with her while she was asleep, but immediately states that it's just another lie. Jet gives Faye the third of the bounty. She is shocked that the bounty is so little. Jet confesses that he actually added a zero to the total. A prisoner named Toucan is complimenting Udai Taksim for escaping a prison transport and killing the guards. He offers him champagne, however, Taksim pours it into the mouth of a dead guard and smiles. At the Bebop, Spike is sleeping, but Faye wakes him, saying the shower is broken again. She also yells at Jet. Jet says he's busy. He gets a call, but Faye snatches her phone and rudely tells the caller that Jet is busy and hangs up the call. The caller tries again. Jet apologizes to Faye. Faye finds out that the caller's name is Fad, which makes Jet stare into space for a long time. The inmates have taken a pilot as a hostage. Dig shoots at the pilot for trying to stop them. Udai slits the throat of Dig and Toucan realizes that he is an assassin from Red Dragon Crime Syndicate. Jet meets up with Fad and they exchange some of their history. Fad explains to him about the transport ship and Udai is on the ship. Jet walks away, saying that the job doesn't interest him. A flashback shows Jet and Fad chasing a suspect. Jet corners Udai, he smiles at him, and a spotlight blinds Jet. A gunshot is heard as the flashback ends. The inmates make a plan and Udai is confident that they can break into the ISSP blockade. A former police captain suggests that they can ram into the weakest point of the blockade. On the Bebop, Ed tries to stop Jet, but Jet doesn't stop. He meets Fad and accepts the job with the offer of a cigarette. Udai pretends to be a prisoner guard and says they are releasing a shuttle with hostages. As the shuttle reaches ISSP cruisers, it explodes and guns on the ship shoot down the remaining police ships. Fad and Jet fly toward the spot where the ship was last seen. The police radio informs them that the prisoners have gone missing. Jet explains that Udai will go to Europa to try to join the European Syndicate and Fad follows his advice. The European Syndicate refuses to work with Udai. Jet and Fad get ready and the fight begins. Jet uses a grappling hook to guide his pod to the door. An inmate fires a rocket launcher to Fad's ship. It hits, and the ship crashes into the prison ship. 
Toucan decides to escape, but his way is blocked by Thad's ship. Jet and Udai meet. Thad reaches the ship and kills the ex-police captain. Jet and Udai have a one-on-one -on -one fight, but Udai has better skills. Udai shoots at Jet, but he uses his prosthetic arm to stop the bullet. Udai explains to him that Jet was a threat to the syndicate, and in the past, it was Thad who betrayed Jet and shot him. Udai is shot and killed by Thad. Jet asks Thad about the truth. Thad explains that anyone who goes against the syndicate loses. Thad points a gun at Jet. As he's about to pull the trigger, Jet dives and fires at him. Thad falls onto the ground. Jet checks his gun and finds out that it was empty. The ISSP reinforcements surround the ship as Jet sneaks away. The Bebop crew is out of fuel and food and are blaming each other. Jet says they should just hold on as they are about to reach Europa. Ed remembers that she has a peanut but is caught red-handed by the other crew members. The Bebop is hit by a ship and Ayn eats the peanut. The driver in that ship flies away and they crash off course on the surface of the planet Lo. Everyone is fine. Jed and Spike begin to fix the ship, and they suggest Ed find food. Ed goes out, but she doesn't find anything. She sees the ship that hit them earlier and tries to trail it, but eventually she loses it. She looks around and finds a watermelon truck and asks him for a watermelon. He denies her because they have no money. A woman named Coffee comes to the truck and buys some watermelon. She shows the man a picture and asks if he has seen the man before. Ed and Ayn get into her car trunk secretly. Later, two police officers stop Coffee and they ask her if she has seen a man named Domino Walker. She tells the officers she has been looking for the same man. The cops insist to check her trunk for clues on Domino. She allows them. They open the trunk and see Ed and Ayn sleeping. They arrest Coffee while Ed and Ayn sneak away. Ed is now in a town where she sees Domino eating a sandwich. A man named Shaft appears and tries to stop Domino and blames his mushrooms for his death, but Domino denies it. Shaft pulls his gun out and Domino runs away and drops the mushrooms. Ayn eats one of the mushrooms. Ed takes the mushrooms back to the crew to test the effects of it. Faye hallucinates, imagining she is submerged in water while repeatedly making swimming motions. Spike hallucinates walking hundreds of thousands of steps while he is just stepping on the same step over and over again. Jet hallucinates having a conversation with a bonsai tree. Ed figures out that the mushrooms aren't safe for humans. Her and Ayn see that Domino has a bounty on him. Ed packs up and searches for him, but instead got the attention of Coffee and Shaft. Domino Walker is found inside a hit and run ship. Ed shoots stinky gas at him, but he is able to run away. She pursues him onto a train and he jumps on it. Shaft and Coffee catch the train. Ed and Ayn reach the train, and Ayn bites Domino's bags, which forces him to let go. The bag hits Shaft, who falls onto Coffee in her car, resulting in a crash. A cow in the middle of the tracks causes the train to come to a halt, and Domino is left to Ed's mercy. The criminal begs Ed to let him go, and offers his mushrooms for his life, as they are more valuable than the bounty. Ed agrees and takes the mushrooms back to the Bebop. At night, the crew wakes up and is amazed Ed retrieved the bag of valuable mushrooms. Suddenly, a police officer comes to ask them about Walker and his mushrooms. Spike, still in a daze from his hallucination, brings out the bag of mushrooms. The cop is suspicious and tests the mushrooms, but confirms they are just shiitake mushrooms. Back on the Bebop, Jet cooks various shiitake mushroom meals. Besides Ed, the crew is tired of mushrooms. The next day, Faye returns to the Bebop after doing her usual betting on horse races. She finds a package is about to be delivered to her. Spike and Ed are interested while Jet is not. A drone drops the package and Jet has to pay the delivery charges. Jet tells Faye to pay the charges, but she leaves the Bebop immediately, thinking that it must be from past enemies and she wants to avoid them. Jet scans the package to make sure it's safe, but Spike opens it and finds an old cassette tape. However, None of them know what it is. Jet searches and finds out it is an old media tape that was popular in the 1980s, and he decides to sell it. They go to a video antique store and they play the cassette in a player. The footage reveals a young girl, but before they could identify her, the player malfunctions. Spike tries to fix it, but breaks the player. They go back to the Bebop and Jet tries to repair the tape. Ed then finds another player on Earth. All the while, Faye is now betting on dog races. 
Spike and Jet travel to Earth to find another cassette player. They find and raid a museum and find the player. They return to the Bebop and the cassette player does not play the video. Ed informs them that they must have gotten the wrong type of player and the two give up their search. Faye then loses all of her money and decides to call the Bebop. Ed informs her that they are worried, but they didn't tell her why. She decides to return to the Bebop. In the meantime, another package arrives for Faye. Jet doesn't accept it, but Spike opens it and finds that it has the beta player that is needed to view the tape. Faye arrives and the crew decides to watch it. Jet tells Faye she has to pay if she wants to see it and she leaves, saying she doesn't need to see it. However, curiosity wins her over and she peeks at it from afar. It turns out, the tape is a time capsule message. Several girls recorded themselves to address their future selves. The main speaker is none other than a younger Faye herself. She offers words of encouragement for her future self, and the older Faye is unable to remember those moments. She is moved by the words of her younger self and begins to cry. And that brings us to the end of Act 2 of Cowboy Bebop. If you want to see more of the Bebop crew's adventures, remember to like this video, subscribe to Panorama Anime, and leave a comment for Act 3.